All right, you sons of bitches, are you ready for another exciting episode of How Do These People Fuck Up Their Jiu-Jitsu? Today, we have Sebastian. He is on the bottom. We can't really see his gorgeous face right now, but we will soon. This is at the ADCC European Trials 2024, so it's fairly recent. I uh, reformatted my computer, so if I fuck up my hotkeys and mess up the video, but let, let's be real, I'm, I'm probably going to do that. We just got to deal with it, though. Okay, so what do we have going on right now? Sebastian's on bottom. He's got something of a quasi butterfly guard going on. The other guy has underhooks on him, though. That is tremendously bad. Okay, so right now we need to elevate, make space. Um, does he have two underhooks? I'm not sure. I didn't get a good angle to see yet. Okay, I'm going to be starting and stopping this a lot, guys. I haven't done a review in a while. Just bear with me. Okay, that was really a good transition. Okay, so let's go back. So he reaches over for the leg. Okay, he's still got a butterfly hook in. Oop. He's able to kick up and over and lace the leg through. Okay, that was nice. He almost has kind of a single leg X. He's got single leg X kind of going here. He's looking for the reap. Knocks his opponent down. Okay, not able to come up right away. Has a he had a fairly strong leg lace though, so like that would have been nice to see him finish. But otherwise, this is really really good for our friend Sebastian. Oh, he lets the other guy come on top. I think he could have kept him down there. It would have been a little better if he did, because you see that once once the guy stands up, he has options in, in terms of pressuring you a little bit. Whereas it's, it's a lot harder for him to pressure a pass when he's laying down. Oh, okay. So that was a little sloppy. So, so right here, uh, my, my one big critique I will give for everything that's going on right now, it's a little chaotic, is that your legs have been decently loose. Like, at no point did you really clamp on a tight lace and lock his legs down, lock his hips down. And, like, in this transition here, your legs are just kind of wide open. Uh, I, I just think there can be a little bit more tightness to it. I don't know if I would have tried to come up off of his back step either. So, like, you see you're coming up. Like, his torso was above your torso already, so he's going to jump on the front headlock, and that was something that was a little bit predictable. You didn't get punished for it, though, and that's fantastic. Anytime we don't get punished for our mistakes, that's beautiful. All right, so we're back in our kind of, like... Hold on. Going back for the same, same entry to the legs. I like it. Okay, uh, I think he's kind of giving me leg lock guy vibes, man. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> okay, good entry to the legs again. Okay, I want I want to see this get tight. The, the The number one person that I'm scared of when it comes to a leg lace battle is someone who fucking clamps down. And I'm repeating myself, but it, it's someone who just like bites the fuck at, with their legs to where I don't feel like I can move. If I don't feel like I can move, the the second they actually touch my heel, it's going to apply so much more force to my knee that it's going to be just awful. Okay, he's kind of going for a straight ankle lock on us. I don't think it's going to have any real threat or pressure. Okay, we got our leg past him. He could kind of chase our back a little bit, but not likely. Not, not very well. He's on our head. We can kind of ignore that. If that gets annoying, you just peel it off. No big deal. But really, we, we, we want to knock him back over. Okay, don't try to come up off this one. I, I think you might, but it's not going to go well. So we're losing the heel. Uh, something I might do at this point because, like, like this is gone. This, you know, we're not going to get that. We're not going to pull his leg all the way back in. So, like, right now, I might consider just diving up for the underhook on him right there because we already kind of have a butterfly hook on this side and that other foot can kind of come over into a butterfly hook. Or I might reach under for this leg and kind of, like, kick myself, you know, like, fully transition to the same position you've been playing but over on this side instead. Ooh, okay. Another thing you can start doing, too, is to say, fuck the foot, you know, footsies for losers, and we could just uh, two-on-one this grip. And what you can do is, like, when, when you lift with the butterfly hooks, you can kind of drag it past you. And you may spin him all the way around, and that'd be great. You know, Marcelo does this to get on everyone's back. But it, but it would give you access to, like, his torso. You know what I mean? Like, if we drug his arm past this way, and then we just, like, attacked right here, that would go pretty well for us. Just got clamped. Just get, just get connected, you know. It would give us options, at least. 
Oh, you are? <laughs> okay. I swear I didn't watch the match ahead of time. That was exactly what I wanted you to do. That was good. That was good stuff. Okay. Now the guy is just sitting on his ass and both of his legs are kind of forward. He couldn't get up very well. So if you could unlace your legs, he doesn't look like he has a good leg lace on you or anything. That would be a time I might look into just standing up and rustling up with his leg and kind of like an ankle pick. Now he's on top again. Carefully doesn't get in your head again. It's not that I think he's going to finish the guillotine. It's that the guillotine is a really strong upper body connection to allow him to start forcing passes. That's all. <laughs> Good old Spartan kick. Okay, I, I, I kind of want you to switch to more traditional guards at this point. You know, maybe like some single X uh, to wrestle up, some, some X guard, a butterfly guard, uh, close guard, half guard, and just something that gives you a little more offensive threat in terms of position. So you're, you're submission hunting so hard that your position play is fairly weak. You're just kind of on bottom, you know? Ooh, that's a that's a much better lace, much better. Stop rolling though, stop rolling. Ah, we're out of bounds. You know this is ADCC. They don't give a fuck. They'll just let you heel hook them on the concrete or the the hardwood floor. Okay, we got traditional triangle bite. I don't think it looks, it doesn't look very tight though. Nah, I don't know, you, you, if, if you're pushing your knee into a hip right there, it's probably pretty tight. It's hard for me to tell. No, okay, it's not because of how much he's able to move his hips. So tighten it, tighten it up. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Um, that was a good idea. You had the right idea. You started going for upper body, you started going for wrestle up, but you you uh, kind of over fixated on something and you, for, you missed a good opening. So, yeah, so right here. You have, oh shit, oh god. Let's go back. So you went for the leg, and I think where you screwed up was not focusing on the leg. So right here, okay. Yeah, he's grabbing a guillotine. He's not gonna get you in close guard because you've got his leg picked. How did I do that? Okay, anyways, sorry. Uh, so he, he's not going to finish that guillotine. I don't think there's any real threat there. Um, but you take your other arm and you, you wrap it around his head instead of like connecting to the leg itself and trying to actually put him down, or trying to back up with the leg at this point, or go you know or, or go forward or spin out to the side. But we, we got a lot of options. But the connecting to the upper body up here, I think, is where you kind of made a mistake, um, but especially too because you can't turn it into a double leg. So like imagine a scenario like this where you both start standing up right here. Now you, you drop and blast again, you know, and it's just kind of hard to do when your, your arm was past him, your arm's up on his head. So I, you think you could have stayed in the leg, and I think, anyways, let's, ooh, yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so he actually did what I was kind of saying to do, but uh, luckily you paid off the ref ahead of time, and he stopped it right as soon as he got on your leg. Hey, okay, 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 big critiques on the wrestling. If I can draw a straight line with that arrow the way I just did earlier down your fucking leg, it's it's a, a little bit too straight, okay? So, like, your, your knees are going to lock up. If he shoots on you right now in any way, which he can do if he snaps you down and goes forward at all, 
you're not going to be able to sprawl effectively. You're not going to be able to down block effectively, and he's going to get on you. Okay, uh, you, you're kind of bent over. You're really leading forward posture, and the the big threat between with having your legs this straight and having your posture this bent. I don't know how I did that either. Is that you're very susceptible to getting like snapped down this way, and you're going to have to take multiple steps, and those multiple steps are going to really compromise your your ability to react either offensively or defensively. Okay, really let him get in deep there, but we did manage to sprawl. Okay, so okay, you're, you're doing something I don't like. Uh, I don't like people that just bear like blindly paw out. Okay, so like you, you you can tell by your stance that even if you had got on his head and snapped him down a little bit, you're not ready to shoot very well. So, it, like like right here, this your legs are locked up again. Your your posture is kind of compromised. And especially here, you're, you're straight-legged at one point completely. And you're still doing big paws out. Okay, not completely straight, but straight enough that it's hard for you to react. Um, you can't shoot off this. So even if you get on his head, and even if you snap him down a little bit and apply pressure, you can't follow up on it. So what's the point? You guys always got to think not just like one step ahead, but two steps ahead. You know, okay, I connect to his head. Why did I do that? Why did I grab that grip? And if there's no reason, then you need to go back and kind of like examine your decision making in the match, you know? Okay, we did effectively sprawl. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that, boy's a, that boy's a wrestler. <laughs> Alright. Uh, maybe you should pull guard again, bro. Uh, not that you made massive mistakes here. I mean, you're uh, you're on your knees at this point, and that's the reason you get fucked. You don't, you're not really on your toes anymore, so your weight can't really adjust as well. And he's able to slide through, and I, they they might give him reversal or, or take down points. And really, I, I don't really uh, I'm not up to date on the ACC rules. So don't critique me for not getting the points right. Fuck points. Submission. Submission. But yeah, I, I would actually pull guard on this guy at this point if I were you, because that was a that was a display of wrestling skill, that is a problem. Okay, so did he have that hook to begin with? No, he didn't. All right, so. He's got his hand on the mat. All right, his hands are not locked. He doesn't have hooks in. When he goes to sit backwards like that, you slide out and then you turn into him with and get your legs between you and him again. Like if you had been ready to react in this way, you would have been free. But because we're just kind of blindly committed to the turtle, we didn't take advantage of him really compromising his situation. And our turtle wasn't tight enough. You didn't keep your elbow locked in tight enough between your hip. And he just puts a hook in. Now we are in trouble. No, oh, I, I really hope this is recording, by the way. I had to set up my hockeys again. Oh, boy. Imagine. Actually, don't just imagine. I've done that before. I've critiqued 20-minute matches, and it took me like 45 minutes, and the recording wasn't on, and I was just like, ugh. All right. Time went off. No points for anyone. Uh, ADCC does overtime, right? Yep, all right. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I'm not going to repeat myself too heavily, but the pawing. <laughs> the pawing and the straight leggedness. You were, dude, if you had a blast W right at the start of the, like, you, okay, you got in a wrestling stance, kind of, and then the ref said go. You slap hands, and the first thing you do is get out of it. <laughs> and you can't paw while also postured completely up. It's not a good idea. And also, you, you pawed with the same leg that is forward. So, like, your, your left... Uh-oh. Your left arm reached out, 
while your left leg was forward. And that's just the easiest blast double ankle pick spin out single in the world. Okay, that was a good idea. I like the snap down into the guillotine attempt. Now, uh, a really fun follow-up to that is when you snap them down into a guillotine, they panic and they try to posture up, and then what you do is you, you push up on their chin, and you actually push them up, drop, level change, blast, double them. It's actually funny enough, uh, when I went against Couch for like the first time at a Fuji and it beat the fuck out of him, that's one of the things I did to him. I, I jumping fake guillotined him and then dropped and blast doubled him. So, good times, good times. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> uh, that was a good... I liked it. Okay, so... Um, I like that you went for something. You went for, like, a, a foot trip, I think? Or did he... Oh, wait. I read that wrong completely. Albert is... So it looks like he tried to pixel you, and you slid through and actually chopped his legs out. So um, when they start reaching across your, your body and grabbing your ear on the other side, you really got to watch for that slide-by-foot sweep attempt. It's just it's one of the tells. And then we don't manage to get on top. Okay. He is big danger of armbarring us right now. Get your arm down. Okay, well, now we're not going to get armbarred. Wait, he has both hooks, though. Fuck. I don't know what that signal from the ref that is. Wait, was that his way of scoring? He's signaling, okay, he got the points, but he doesn't, they, they don't hold their hand up for the points? Okay. I don't know how this works. I just roll. So we're completely flat right now. He's got us completely flattened out. You really got to be like corkscrewing your hips left and right. Uh, it's hard for you to get back onto your knees, so you like you got to be turning. Fuck, man. Okay. Yeah, very respectful at the end. It was a good match. So let's. Uh, Let's kind of go over this from the start. So the, your your leg lock stuff was good. It was fine. Uh, you had a lot of leg lock, like lace entries, and you were doing a good job kicking your legs up and over. You look decently flexible. You definitely know what you're doing there. Uh, I would like to see you just just go into that position and not even try to heel hook people. Just spend two weeks and just be the most hated motherfucker in class. Put them in a leg lace, whatever leg laces you like to play, and just clamp as hard as you can for as long as you can, and don't let them move. Keep them on the map. Push your knees into their hip, knock them down, keep them down, and make eye contact as often as possible as you watch them get pissed off. But stuff like that, that will make your leg lock game when you actually go to finish it extremely strong. Okay, in just a couple weeks of doing something like that, like it's, I've talked about this before on the channel, but like I went and I did a whole month of all I did was like shoulder, not a month, I think it was like a week or two, but. Uh, all I did was shoulder pressure from side control and try to choke everybody out in class and I would squeeze so hard the whole fucking time that my arms would start to shake and they would give out and I would switch side control to the other side and do it every single round for a couple of weeks and now people just cry and bitch and moan about my shoulder pressure and I love it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a them problem at this point, okay? So, do stuff like that for all the positions you really, you really like. Close guard, half guard, butter, well, not butterfly guard, I guess the upper body connection is butterfly guard, but you, 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 you kind of get the idea, right? Um, your wrestling though, your your wrestling really needs work. If you listen, uh, I know that there's differing opinions on whether you should hold a wrestling stance or not. You know, there's people that are wrong and they think you should be postured up. Okay, they want to play footsie and do judo. You notice all the people that fucking say that are like six five and just yoked on steroids. Yeah, they, they, you you do not look like you're fucking six five and yoked on steroids. You better get in a goddamn wrestling stance. You know, just use your, use your shoulders and good posture and defend the guillotines that way positionally. You know, um, 
uh, you, you, you gotta be able to hold your stance for like twice the length of the match though so that and you, that way you can move fluidly in the stance for the whole length of the match so you really gotta go into that position and practice that uh, until you, it just becomes natural um, your back defense was a little I don't want to say lackluster but you're okay how do I put this you're not being proactive with your back defense. You're being reactive. You're uh, you're waiting for something to happen instead of trying to force yourself out of the position. Okay, so like when I go into a position like that, I want to get away. So I have to move and do something. I mean, maybe I trick the guy going side to side. Maybe I, whatever it is that I do, I am trying to escape. I'm not trying to wait for him to let me free. Okay, so we have to be aggressive with our defense from those positions. And because we weren't, we missed an opportunity to escape, and he ended up getting that hook in. And he didn't get a choke, which is good. But yeah, uh, big critiques on the wrestling, though. I'd really like to see you get in a stance more. I'd like to see you stop pawing out with the same lead arm. I don't want to see you paw out at all. You should. You, the, the People talk about T-Rex arms in wrestling for a reason. It's because this is your fucking zone. You know, if you reach out, it should be straight. It should be with the back arm and the back, the back, the back armed leg, or however you want to pronounce that. And there should be a reason. Why do I want to get in his head? Do I have it? Do I have moves that I'm comfortable doing when I'm on their head like that? No. Well, then don't don't reach for the head. You know, reach for something else. Uh, do do something else. Go for wrist control. Okay. At least know what you want to do with it. And if you know what you want to do with it, you should be doing it. You shouldn't be waiting for opportunities. You should be looking how to set those opportunities up. Okay, that's a little preachy. I'm a little preachy. I apologize. But otherwise, I think your jiu-jitsu was really good. It was, it was a pretty good match. Uh, the flow was good. And we just kind of uh, just kind of lost it at the end. So, that has been another uh, <laughs> another jiu-jitsu review. I'm going to try to do one of these every couple days. I've got like 100 submissions to go through right now. I posted the link yesterday. Uh, yeah, I will see you guys soon. Good day.